Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. I'm getting myself geared up to show you the conclusion of something I started a couple of sessions ago. I showed you how to set a beam perfectly. I went through all the theory and all the mechanisms that allow you to set your beam up perfectly. Well, I exaggerate slightly. You may have been able to get it perfectly because the method, there's nothing wrong with the method. The thing that's wrong is you. How accurate did you perform that task that I told you to perform? <laughs> this is a problem that I've seen many people struggle with. They can set their beam up perfectly according to the rules that I've given you. Let me demonstrate something that I didn't tell you. So, you have just set your machine up perfectly and you've got your beam passing right through the centre of the axis and you're happy. Come back to here. Now, forget about the mechanism by which I'm doing this. What you need to do is put a, a target in front of your mirror three. Right, so I've got my power set to about 15% on here. So I should get quite a neat little dot. And then we'll send that to the back of the machine. Okay, now that's what I call the fourth corner. Because you've just set it to the first, the second and the third corner. And this is going to demonstrate, maybe, because I set this machine up probably about a year and a half ago and I haven't really touched it since then. So let's see what we're like at the fourth corner. I mean, technically, if I've set this machine up absolutely flat and square and true, the fourth corner should be perfect. Actually, it's not bad. I thought I was going to use my own incompetence to demonstrate how to solve this problem. Well, this could be a very short video if I want to stop at this point. But hey, I still haven't shown you how to fix the problem if there was a problem. It is not unusual to see the fourth corner as far out as that. You say, well, how is that possible? What does it mean? I've been looking at this problem with people for many years. And the usual solution that most people immediately and intuitively adopt is to say, ah, that means my head has actually dropped down because my burn has gone high. And if my head has dropped down, the solution to that problem is very simple. We put shims under this rail and that will now raise the rail up and fix the problem. Well, they keep raising the rail, one millimeter, two millimeters, four millimeters, six millimeters, and I have seen 10 millimeter shim under the back of that rail and the problem still hasn't been solved. Why? Well, because it's nothing to do with the mechanical assembly of this machine. It's all to do with your inadequacy to set the beam correctly. Now I know you've attempted to set it perfectly according to my rules, but those rules, which are the standard rules for setting a machine up, but I've just explained them in great detail so you get them correct, do not take into account a major issue. And the major issue is that this beam that's coming from there is getting to here via mirror number two which means it's not traveling in a straight line. It's bouncing off of that mirror there. Now, I had a correspondent write to me just recently on exactly this problem. He'd used my procedure as described in the uh, recent video, and he'd got his machine set up perfectly in these X and Y axes and down to the Z axis. But once he got to the fourth corner, he had a problem. He couldn't solve the problem or see a solution to the problem. Now, fortunately, he didn't try and shim his rails. <laughs> so, he asked for help and I thought, hang on, I've spoken about the fourth corner problem a long time ago in an old video, but let's take a look at it in a slightly different way, in a way that is not just demonstration, but actually a description of how the problem comes about 
and then we'll talk about how you fix the problem. Once you understand the problem, the solution is actually very simple. And it's nothing to do with shimming your rails. Now, I want you to realise that this here is a flat plane. And that flat plane is actually the two rails that run up the side of the machine and the X rail that runs across the back of the machine. Now, although they look as though these are out of line with each other, they actually describe a flat plane with their movement. Because this head is always the same distance from this table. So imagine this table to be that flat plane. So the movement of the head and the mirror are all moving mechanically in this flat plane. Now, you might say, well, how can you be sure that it's absolutely flat? To be honest, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Even if these rails are very slightly skewed to each other, it wouldn't matter. But when you look at the construction of the machine, whatever machine you look at, there is basically a flat plane that's been manufactured in the machine somewhere. And then there are fixed dimensions where things are mounted above this flat plane. So everything is moving in this flat plane, more or less. Not enough to worry about if it's a few thousandths of an inch out of flat. This is not an, an optically flat system and it doesn't need to be. We've got a mirror and that mirror sits at 45 degrees to that axis and it moves up and down that plane. And as it moves up and down that plane, the beam that is coming in from the back here bounces off that plane and across this way, 45 degrees. And in the same way that the head doesn't move up and down, it moves backwards and forwards along this plane here. Okay, so it's the mirror at 45 degrees like that, but it doesn't make any difference. We're not talking about a mirror anyway. We're talking about a spot that appears in front of mirror three on a vertical face. So let's not lose sight of what we're trying to show here. So in accordance with my previous video, you're trying to set your beam, which I'm going to draw in green, true to this mechanical axis, the Y axis, right? And you have a pretty good go at doing it and you basically fail because that's what you finish up with. I know I've grossly exaggerated this, as I said, but you need to see this gross exaggeration to understand what's going on. You're equally as rubbish at setting up the X axis. It starts off here because that's where your mirror is and it finishes up there. It's not parallel to that X axis. The fourth corner test is basically this problem. You've burnt a mark on that flat surface there. Okay, and now we're going to move that flat surface mechanically up there. But the time that that point there, A, has moved up to that point there, because it's being reflected off this mirror as I move that mirror back. And look, it's moving further and further up the mirror as I get close to zero, like that. And what's gonna happen is that point A is now gonna finish up there, point A. And it means that that angle there is gonna be the same angle. So the reflection off of this mirror hits point A. And as that reflection moves up this mechanical plane, the reflection is moving up towards the plane as well. So that means that this line here is going to follow this line here. Okay, so we're going to finish up with point A up there, although it started down here, purely because of this error here. So that's how we get our two points here, which do not coincide all because of your setting error here, which is being reflected over here on this fourth corner. Okay, so now you can see what the problem is and how you've caused it. I know this will be very small, but it still can result in maybe a two or three millimeter error over on that corner, just because these are not absolutely on a flat plane. So how do we fix it? Look, there are two problems here. We've got a problem in Y and we've got a problem in X. 
So we need to break the problem into two pieces and solve one part at a time. So let's do that by putting our target at the back corner here and create, and I'll, and I'll just draw a blue mark on here. Okay, and we'll burn a mark on there. And here it is. It's a target mark. All right. Now it's way out of position, but it doesn't matter at the moment. And now what we're going to do, we're going to move this target mark forwards like that. Now, as we move that target mark forwards, it's not going to move because it's mechanically attached to the head. It's not going to move down this green line. It's going to move along this parallel with this red line. So, so our target is going to finish up there because it's moving down that plane there. So we've got our target and it's at the front of the machine. What are we going to do now? Well, we've got this thing at the back here, mirror one, which is catching the beam as it comes out of the laser beam and it's firing it down this axis here. Well, it's firing it down this green axis at the moment. So what we're trying to do now, we're trying to raise this beam here from A to B. Okay, now there's the target. We move the target to here. And the only way that we can get that point to move to there is if we adjust mirror one. So we adjust mirror one until we bring this A to B. Now, we shall do that and we'll find that when we take it back to A, we've probably made a small modification to A as well. So this is an iteration process where we may have to go back, put new target on A, run it to B, retweak that. And we may have to do that several times, maybe three or four times, to get coincidence between A and B by adjusting mirror one. Now, when we've, adjusted, when we've adjusted mirror one, effectively what we've done is this. The green beam, so that it's now running true to the red plane in Y, but not in X, because we've still got this offset here in X, which has been translated now to a parallel motion to B. So we've still got an error in X, which is this dimension here away from being true. Well, that's easy now because you know how to set the X axis. You've done that many times before. You won't be aiming for that target anymore. What you'll have, you'll have a green target here and a green target here. And you'll be running back between these two green targets and you'll be correcting this angular error that you created in the x-axis. So you correct the x-axis error in the normal way that you would set an x-axis. And when you've done that, you will fix your fourth corner problem. Now, I, it's a very difficult concept to imagine. It, you need to see it in a diagrammatic form to try and understand where you have made very small errors that can magnify themselves over at this fourth, fourth corner. Now I hope my diagram is clear enough and my explanation is complete enough for you to see what's actually happening or for you to imagine what's happening. If you can imagine it, it's easy to fix it. If you can't imagine it, it's still easy to fix it because put a target on the head at the back corner and produce a burn mark. Bring it to the front corner and adjust mirror one to make the beam hit that target. You may need to do that two or three times with a new target check, new target check, but eventually you'll be able to get A and B coincident by just fiddling with mirror one. Now, having fiddled with mirror one, you've then got to go and concentrate and reset exactly the same as you did before, the x-axis with a target here and a target here, target here, target here, and eventually you'll finish up with x being corrected as well and everything will then sit in this plane. So there's only two things that you've got to remember, mirror one, mirror two, and these two positions here. Well, thanks again for your time. Um, I hope that all makes sense, and I'll catch up with you next session.